hello students in the last video lecture we talk about the conversion of parabolic pde to its canonical form so today we will talk about conversion of of elliptic pde elliptic pde to its canonical form to its canonical form okay so the method will be the same as we have discussed in the last video lecture where we talk about the conversion of the hyperbolic pde and the parabolic pde to its canonical form the same method we will follow over there so the following example will clear you the idea how to convert the elliptic pd to its canonical form so first of all the statement is given the pd is this one you have to convert this pd to its canonical form so first of all you have to write down the pd to its means uh, write in, in a compact form you know that cos z over cos x square this is the value of r this is s this is t and cos z by cos y is q okay so you rewrite it this one so just compare this equation with the standard second order pd which will be rr plus ss plus tt plus function of x y z p q is equal to 0 so when you compare you will get that value of capital r is 1 s will be minus 4 and t will be 13 so you have to first of all you have to find the value of s square minus 4 rt so when you place their values minus 4 square minus 4 into 1 into 13 that will be 4 square 16 minus 4 13 that will be 4 into 13 will be 52 16 minus 52 that will be minus 30 so that means we are getting the negative value when s square minus 4 rt is negative then your given pd will be elliptic okay so your pd will be elliptic now you have to convert it into the canonical form so what will be the first step to do just you have to form the quadratic equation so what will be the quadratic equation that will be r lambda square plus s lambda plus t is equal to 0 for some lambda okay so you know the value of r s t so you place their values so you will get then equation lambda square minus 4 lambda plus 13 is equal to 0 so this is a quadratic equation there will be the two roots for this equation so we solve it when you solve it if you did not get the factor so you solve it by this rule minus b plus minus b square minus 4 ac divided by 2 a okay if you you know that if there is a equation a b square or a x square plus b x plus c right plus b x plus c is equal to 0 so its roots will be given by this one okay minus b plus minus root b square minus 4 ac divided by 2 a so same rule we apply over there and we get the roots so what are the roots over here that will be 2 plus minus 3 iota so that means there are the two root 2 plus 3 iota and 2 minus 3 iota so 2 plus 3 iota i call it as a lambda 1 and 2 minus 3 iota we call it as a lambda 2 okay so when you got the two roots of the given quadratic equation so by using these two roots we form the ordinary differential equation okay so we we got the two we take that that will be the third step we take the two ordinary differential equation divided by dx plus lambda 1 equal to 0 and divided by dx plus lambda 2 equal to 0 so place this value over there for lambda 1 over here and lambda 2 over here so you will get this one this divided by dx plus this will be equal to 0 and divided by dx plus 2 minus 3 eta will be equal to 0 so when you solve it just you have to take the integration okay so this is the constant part you know that okay so by the separation of variable you can easily solve it dy plus 2 plus 3 eta into dx will be equal to 0 and dy plus 2 minus 3 eta into dx equal to 0 so that will be y plus this is constant so that will be constant into x that will be equal to some constant okay so y plus this is equal to some constant and y plus this into x will be equal to some constant right or you can rewrite these terms as I will call it as I collect the real part separate so that will be y plus 2x that will be real part and iota into 3x that will be imaginary part 
okay, that is equal to some constant. Here also we will write down y plus 2 x minus of iota into 3 x is equal to some constant. Okay. So, we call it this one is as u and we will call this function as v. So, we will call u is equal to y plus 2 x plus iota 3 x and v is equal to y plus 2 x minus iota 3 x. So, what we see here? We see that we real part we call it here real part y plus 2 x we call it this one as alpha and 3 x we call it as beta. So, this is alpha plus iota beta right ok and y plus 2 x I call it as alpha. So, this is alpha and this is beta. So, alpha minus iota beta. So, what we see here u and v are actually the complex conjugate of each other ok. Alpha plus iota beta is u and alpha minus iota beta is v. V is nothing but this is u bar. Okay. Okay. So, we, what we see here? We see here we got the two another two independent variables we got here. What are the independent variable? Alpha and beta actually we got. Okay. So, first of all in the previous okay, when we conversion hyperbolic and the parabolic into the canonical form. So, what we do here? That was the function of x y. That was a function of x y we convert it into the function of u v but here u is also a function of alpha beta. So, we will convert it, it, it into the function of alpha beta actually. Okay. So, what we do here? Just u z in terms of alpha and beta we consider. So, we will convert z in the form of alpha plus oh sorry in the form of function of alpha and beta. Okay. So, what you have to do? Just you have to find out the value of p q r s t in terms of in terms of alpha and beta. You have to find. So, what you do? P. What is P? P is cos z by cos x. But z is a function of alpha and beta. So, first of all, if you have to find out the value of cos z over cos x. So, what do you do here? We see that z is a function of alpha and beta. So, first of all, derivative of z with respect to alpha then derivative of alpha with respect to x right plus another variable of z is beta. So, derivative of partial derivative of z with respect to beta, but we have to want to take the partial derivative with respect to x. So, partial derivative of beta with respect to x right. So, the same thing we are written here ok, but we know that this cal z by cal alpha by z as it is and cal z by cal beta is as it is ok but you know the value of alpha and beta. So, we just place the value of alpha and beta alpha is y plus 2 x and beta is 3 x. So, we write down their value. So, the partial derivative of this with respect to x that will be 0 plus 2 it will be 2 and is partial derivative with respect to x will be 3. So, 3 into this thing ok. So, we get the value of p will be equal to this one that means value of cal z by cal x we got it will be equal to this one right. Similarly, now we go for the q. So, what will be q? q will be cal z by cal y, but z is again a function of alpha and beta. So, it will be again z partial derivative with respect to alpha into alpha with respect to y. Okay. Then partial derivative of z with respect to beta into partial derivative of beta with respect to y. Right. But we will place the value of alpha and beta. So, you take the derivative with respect to y that will be 1 plus 0 that will be 1 though that will be cal z by cal alpha. But if you take the partial derivative of 3 x with respect to y, so this is independent of y. Okay. So, that means that partial derivative will be 0. So, this part remains 0. Okay. So, that means uh, cal z by cal alpha will be left. So, what is q? q is cal z by cal y. So, cal z by cal y is equal to cal z by cal alpha. So, that means operator cal by cal y will be equal to cal by cal alpha right. So, you got the value for the q also p also we got. Now, r s t is left here. So, s we will find what will be s here? s will be cal square z over cal x cal y. Okay. So, we can derive this thing as cal by cal y of you can write it as this will be. So, it will be cal y cal y of cal z by cal x. Okay. So, you will say it will be cal y cal y is cal y cal alpha. 
So, you will say that that will be called y cal alpha right. Now, cal z by cal x value is 2 into cal z by cal alpha plus 3 into cal z by cal beta. So, we write down this value. Now, when you take the partial derivative inside, so you will say that that will be 2 come outside that is a constant cal square z by cal alpha square plus 3 into cal square z by cal alpha cal field beta okay, that will be s. Now, s will be cal square z by cal x here you can rewrite it cal by cal x of cal z by cal x, but you know the value of cal z by cal x that means p you know. So, p will be this one. So, you take the partial derivative with respect to x. So, when you take the partial derivative with respect to x, so pay attention over here. So, you will take that 2 is constant cal by cal x of cal z by cal alpha plus 3 is constant taken outside cal by cal x of cal z by cal beta right. But here z is a function of alpha and beta and cal z by cal alpha that is also a function of alpha and beta. If this is whole thing, this whole thing is a function of alpha and beta. So, when you take its partial derivative with respect to x, so firstly its partial derivative with respect to alpha, then alpha with respect to x will be there. Okay. So, we take the partial derivative of cal z by cal alpha with respect to alpha into cal alpha by cal x plus partial derivative of this with respect to second coordinate beta into cal beta by cal x. Okay. So, that will be this one part. Okay. Now, plus 3 part. Now, you have to partial derivative of this part with respect to x. So, again the same rule cal z by cal beta is a function of alpha and beta. So, first of all partial derivative of cal z by cal beta with respect to alpha into cal alpha by cal x plus partial derivative of cal z by cal beta with respect to beta into cal beta by cal x right. This will be the by using the chain rule you will write. Okay. Then when you take its partial derivative just place the value of alpha and beta we know here the value of alpha we place here the value of beta alpha and beta we place here also okay the remaining thing will be the edge it is okay so when you take the partial derivative so its value will be 2 and its value will be 3 its value will be 2 and 3 okay we did write down so when you collect these things we get the value for this one that will be your s okay r then t you have to find t is cal square z over cal y square you can rewrite it cal by cal y of cal z by cal y but cal z by cal y is cal z by cal alpha and cal by cal y is cal by cal alpha so it will be cal square z over cal alpha square so you got the value of p q r s t so you just put this values p q r s t into the equation number one so when you place it into the equation number one you can check that okay you can back to backward to the video and check the statement okay you write down so you check that when you place the values of pqrst in the equation so you get that equation okay so we collect the terms of cal square z over cal alpha square this is over here okay this is over here also minus 4 to the 8 minus 8 cal square z over cal alpha square and this is 13 okay so 4 minus 8 plus 13 13 4 17 minus 8 okay that will be 9 now cal square z over cal beta square is this part and minus minus plus 12 into this part okay so it will be sorry 12 and minus 12 12 minus 12 okay so that part will be cancel out and remaining will be 9 this and minus 9 to this so that part is there so when you collect these terms we got that that was 0 and it will be 9 and this is also 9 okay and this is transferred to right hand side so it will be 9 into cal square z over cal this 9 9 will be cancel out and you will get this so this is your required canonical form right the similar example if you talk about the second example if you talk about its statement is there you have to reduce the equation to the canonical form first of all you have to classify also okay so first of all you write down in the compact form this is r and this is your t 
ok. So, when you rewrite it this will be your this one or right hand side y will come to the left and this becomes the equation. Now, when you compare this equation with the standard form, so you will get the value of R s t ok. By using the value of R s t we will find the value of s square minus 4 r t. So, when you find out s square minus 4 r t you will get minus of 4 y square, but y square is any real number y if y is for any real number y, y square will be positive, but when you multiply y square with minus 4, so that will be negative ok. So, if this part is negative, so that means s square minus 4 r t is negative, so you will say that you will say that value will be uh, this p d will be elliptic ok. You remember here this here y is non zero actually, so for any non zero y, y square will be positive ok. So, we got that the given p d will be elliptic. Now, further you have to convert it into the canonical form. So, what will be the second step? You have to form the quadratic equation r lambda square plus s lambda plus t. So, place the value of r s t, we will get the equation lambda square plus y square equal to 0. So, its roots will be plus minus iota y. So, that means lambda equal to iota y and lambda equal to minus iota y, there are the two roots. So, you form the equations by using this. So, we form the two ordinary differential equation for lambda 1 and lambda 2. This is dy by dx plus lambda 1 equal to 0, dy by dx plus lambda 2 equal to 0. That means, dy by dx plus iota y lambda y is iota y, iota y equal to 0 and dy by dx minus iota y is equal to 0. Okay. So, when you take the integration, so when you take the integration for this part I can say that, for this part if I say, so it will be dy by dx will be equal to minus of iota y ok and you can say that this will be dy by y is equal to minus iota into dx ok. So, this will be your when you take the integration log y is equal to minus iota x plus some constant right. So, this will be the so log y plus iota x equal to some constant. So, this will be your integration. Similarly, here then take its integration it will be log y minus iota x equal to some constant. So, I call this is as u and this is as v ok. So, we call this u and v this is u and this is we call v, but this is a complex number actually. So, we rewrite this u as alpha plus iota beta where alpha is log y and beta is x ok and this is also log y is alpha and x is beta. So, this is alpha minus beta beta. So, that means, u and v are conjugate pair actually ok. So, finally, you have to convert the equation p q r s t in the form of alpha and beta ok. So, when you convert z here z is a function of alpha beta actually now. So, when you find out the value of the small p that will be cos z by cos x. So, the same thing as we have discussed in the previous example, it will be cos z by cos alpha into cos alpha by cos x plus cos z by cos beta into cos beta by cos x right. So, you place the value of alpha and beta. So, place the value of alpha and beta, its partial derivative with respect to x will be 0 ok and its partial derivative with respect to x will be 1. So, it will be cos z by cos beta right. So, p means cos z by cos x. So, cos z by cos x is equal to cos z by cos beta. So, operator cos y cos x will be equal to cos y cos beta that will be the equivalent operator ok. Now, this two uh, now the value of the z will be cos by cos y cos z by cos y. So, it will be again z is function of alpha beta. So, firstly take the partial derivative of z with respect to alpha into alpha partial derivative of alpha with respect to y plus partial derivative of z with respect to beta into cos beta by cos y right. Again put the value of alpha and beta. So, its partial derivative will be 1 by y 1 by y cos z by cos alpha and its partial derivative becomes 0. So, only this part will be left. So, p q we got now r cos square z over cos alpha square you can rewrite it cos y cos x of cos z by cos x and cos y cos x is cos y cos beta and cos z by cos x is cos z by cos beta. So, it will be cos square z over cos beta square t will be given by cos square z over cos y square that will be rewrite as cos y cos y of cos z by cos y 
but what is the value of cal z by cal y? It is 1 by y into cal z by cal alpha. Okay. Now, what do we do here? You have to find out its partial derivative with respect to y. So, you can say that there are the two functions actually. One is 1 by y and the another one is cal z by cal alpha. So, cal z by cal alpha as it is par, uh, partial derivative of 1 by y will be minus 1 by y square plus 1 by y as it is partial derivative of cal z by cal alpha with respect to y. So, just look at here this term will be as it is when you take its derivative 1 by y as it is when you find the derivative of this one this is actually the function of alpha and beta cal z by cal alpha is also a function of alpha and beta. So, you have to find the partial derivative of this cal z by cal alpha with respect to y. So, what you do here firstly partial derivative of this thing with respect to alpha this thing with respect to alpha into alpha with respect to y plus partial derivative of this with respect to beta into cal beta y cal y. Okay. Now, this is cal square z over cal alpha square this is cal square z over cal beta cal alpha. Now, what is left here put the value of alpha and beta here. So, we put the values here just put a find the derivative when you find the derivative you will get minus 1 by y square and cal z by cal alpha plus 1 by y into 1 by y of cal z square z over cal alpha square. So, 1 by y square is common here. So, what is here just first to first we write down the positive part then the negative part is minus cal z by cal alpha. Okay. So, p q r s t we got. So, you just place the value into the first equation you check the statement of the first equation then when you place that value you will got this equation. Okay. When you rewrite it it will be cal square z over cal alpha square plus cal square z over cal beta square equal to cal z by cal alpha plus e raised power alpha. This is the required canonical form of the given partial differential equation which was the elliptic partial differential equation. Okay. So, we are done now the next topic we will discuss in the next class thank you very much students.